In the last screen flow on solving recurrence relations, we look at the master method, a cookbook sort of method for solving many recurrence relations. The master method is based on the master theorem, a theorem that's proven in the Corman et al. textbook. And this applies to recurrences of the familiar nature, written like this, our familiar A is the number of recursive calls, B is the uh, fraction by which we divide the subproblems, and then F of N is the amount of work done at each level and uh, conditions on those, those uh, constants and functions. So if we have a recurrence relation of this form, we can apply the master method based on the theorem in which we compare the F of N right here will be compared to N log B A. Under asymptotic inequality as follows. So there's three cases that are based on comparison under big O, theta, and omega. And you may remember that, um, you know, big O is like less than or equal to, theta is like equal to, and um, omega is like uh, greater than, you know, where f is greater than the reference function. So we're going to compare f to this function under these three uh, relations. And then when one of those relations holds, that will give us the outcome. So let's look at the first case, case one. This is the big O case. This minus epsilon is outside the scope of the log. So essentially, this is saying that uh, f of n is polynomially, polynomially smaller, uh, big O, than the reference function and to log base B of A. In case one, the solution is as follows. T of n is theta of the reference function. Now, intuitively, we think of f of n is the work that's done at each node at, say, the root of the recur recursion tree of calls. And the n log base b of a comes out of the term that handles the recursive calls here, the t n over b. So if the solution says it's theta of n log base b of a, the intuitive interpretation of this is that the cost is dominated by the leaves. This part of the recurrence relation dominates. This one is not so important. And that makes sense because here f of n is big O of this term here that comes out of this part. Uh, that's less than or equal to. So f of n is not growing as great. Uh, the, the greater growth is in the recursive calls. So the cost is dominated by the recursion down to the leaves rather than the work done at a given node. Now let's look at case two. And this is the theta case where they're growing at the same rate. There is a more general form of this. Here the solution is t of n is theta. In this case, and there's a more complex solution in the general case. So here, f of n is within a polylog factor of n log base b of a, but not smaller. So polylogarithmic. This is the poly part. This is the logarithmic part. The intuitive interpretation of this is that the cost is n log base b of a log k in this version at each level, and there are log n levels. So here's the cost at each level, and that's how many levels. This should look familiar because this is like the, where we get the n log n behavior of, say, merge sort. Okay, we're going to go on to case three. I just wanted to note quickly here that epsilon is constant. Let's now look at case three. So as you might expect, we've done big O, theta. Now we're going to do omega. And again, this is for con some constant epsilon greater than zero. But there's also a regularity condition. 
So the solution here is theta of fn. The intuitive uh, interpretation of this is that the cost is dominated by the root. If you have a recurrence where there's a t n over b cost in the recursive calls and then f of n at the root call at any given level and then the recurrence comes out that the root cost tells you what the overall cost is. That means that the root is dominating the cost so the growth of the cost in the recursive calls is too small to be important and that of course is reflected right here. f of n is omega of this which means greater than or equal to asymptotically. So f of n grows asymptotically greater than the reference function adjusted by this epsilon. In fact, in thinking about these epsilons, you might recall from one of our earlier screencasts, the, the introductory material of the semester, when we said that uh, n of n to the 1.999 is um, big O of n squared, um, but it's not theta and n to the 2.0001 is not big O of n squared and not theta, but it is omega of big O of n squared. So just these slight differences in exponents can make a huge difference uh, in the asymptotic growth. And that's what these epsilons are doing here. So because of that difference in exponents, this requirement is that f is polynomial smaller than n log base b of a. Uh, it can't grow at an equal rate. In a similar manner here, f of n has got to be polynomial greater than the reference function n log base b of a. So that means uh, it's important to note that there are functions that fall between these cases. Uh, there's a gap here where f of n is smaller than n log base b of a rather than equal as it has to be here asymptotically but not polynomial smaller. And here there's a gap where f of n is greater than n log base b of a, not asymptotically equal, but not polynomially greater. So there's a slight gap there. You'll get some, some recurrence relations that the master theorem can't handle. And also for case three, you have to um, show the regularity condition holds. So this is not going to cover everything, but it does cover quite a few cases. And so now we'll look at some examples. So I've rearranged things here to make some room for examples. And our first example will be this. So what do you do when you're confronted with a recurrence relation like this? Well, we need to know what d and a are so we can compare f of n. We need to know what f and n is as well. So we need to identify a b and f of n so that we can use them in these comparisons, f of n compared to n log base b of a. So let's look into here. a is 5, b is 2, and f is n squared. So we need to compare f of n to n, base b, uh, n log base b of a. And since uh, b is 2 and a is 5, we need to compare n log 2 of 5 to n squared. Well, log base 2 of 5, log base 2 of 4 is 2, so log base 2 of 5 is slightly bigger, so log base 2 of 5 minus some epsilon is going to be 2. This means it falls into case 1 because we have n squared is big O n to the log base 2 of 5 minus epsilon. So we can choose that epsilon to turn this expression into 2, which makes n squared clearly big O of, of uh, n log base 2 of 5 minus epsilon. So being case 1, our answer is t of n is, we look it up here, the solution, theta of n and it says log base b of a, so I'm going to just write lg for log base 2 of 5. So this is the case where we saw it was dominated by the leaves, the recursive calls. Here's another example. 
um, I want you to appreciate that it might be kind of difficult to write out the recursion tree when you've got 27 branches, and I'm not, it's not really clear what guess to make for substitution. So it's really nice when you can apply the master theorem. So once again, you apply it by identifying the A, the B, and the F. And so we, here we have A, which is the branching factor, and we have B, which is what it's divided into. It's 3, and then F is n cubed log n. So we need to compare F of n, which is n cubed log n, to the expression we get from substituting a is 27, b equals 3, into n log base b of a. So that's n log base 3 of a, which is 27. Well, let's simplify this. n log base 3 of 27, well, log base 3 of 27 is 3, so that's equal to n cubed. So how do we make this work? Well, n cubed log n is bigger than n cubed. We're not going to be able to deal with that with either of the epsilons, and it's not really going to work with this theta here. But this is actually where we need the more complex case here. So we can actually compare it instead of being versus this. Let's make it versus this version of it, which is n log base b of a, which we've already determined to be n cubed, log to some k, log base 2 to some k of n, and here I'm going to choose k equals 1. And now look, we've just made those two expressions equal. So this falls into case 2, where um, f of n, which is n cubed log n, is theta of n log base 3 of 27 log 1 of n. So the case 2 solution, the more complex version, is here. And, whoops, I just noticed a little error here. This is supposed to be a plus. So we rewrite what we had here, which is n base 3 of 27. So our solution is t of n equals theta n cubed, right? And then here we go, log k plus 1, the n. So it's going to be log, and k was 1, squared n. So that's the solution for this current recurrence relation, a cubic logarithmic. Here's another example. We have a equals 5, b equals 2, and f of n is n cubed. So we need to compare n cubed again n to the log base b of a. Well, this is the flip side of our first example. If we add just a little bit to this, let's say we have n log base 2 of 5 plus some little epsilon, which is going to be constant, that will be n cubed for some epsilon greater than 0 that we can choose. So this potentially falls in case 3 because we have uh, n cubed is omega log 2 of 5 plus some epsilon. But we have to check the regularity condition. So the regularity condition is here, a f of n over b. Now n over b, uh, b is 2, so n over b. Uh, f of n over b, f is n cubed, so that whole thing cubed, times a, which is 5. So we'll simplify that. That's 5 n cubed divided by 8, so it's 5 eighths n cubed. And now we need to show that it's less than or equal to c f of n, which is c n cubed. So we need to show 5 8 and cubed is less than or equal to some c and cubed. And of course, this works for c equals 5 8, which of course meets the uh, condition that c is less than or equal to 1. Therefore, case 3 applies, and that is where t of n 
is theta of n cubed. T of n is theta of f of n, and f of n is n cubed. So t of n is theta of n cubed. And remember, this is the case where intuitively the recurrence function, the recurrence relation is dominated by the cost at each node rather than the recursive calls. So n cubed is dominating uh, n divided by 2, even though you've got five of them. And that makes sense. And here's our last example, 27t n divided by 3 plus theta of n cubed log n. So as usual, let's start out. A is 27, B is 3, F of n is this stuff. So the comparison we need to make here is n cubed log n, playing the role of F of n, and log base B of A which is n cubed. But let's also note that n cubed divided by log of n is equal to n cubed log negative 1, and we're comparing that n cubed. Now notice that neither case 1 nor case 3 will work because we can't bring these into the case 1 or case 3 just by adjusting by some epsilon because this will always overwhelm that. So our only hope is case 2, and clearly this, this doesn't match here, so we've got to resort to this here. But here, obviously, um, remember the requirement here is that k is greater than or equal to 0, and here we would have to have a k of negative 1 to make that work. So clearly that's not going to work either, and so therefore we cannot use the master theorem. One would have to take a guess and do substitution. I don't think you want to draw a recursion tree with 27t, though you could perhaps reason it through without drawing everything. There are other examples in the textbook. These are different than the ones in the textbook. Um, possibly the ones in the text are simpler in some ways, and they elaborate on some other issues. So definitely read through those examples, too. And you'll be doing some of these problems. So just follow the pattern of, you know, take your recurrence relation, identify a, b, and f, and then write out what's f versus what's the uh, n log base b of a, compare them to each other, see if you can transform one where you can compare one to the other one under one of these three cases. So that concludes the topic of divide and conquer and recurrence relations with using the master method.